All right, I'm going to sit down for this one because this is going to be a very long build. I've been watching a lot of amazing YouTube videos, people building stuff with Lovable and Bolt. And so this is going to be a mix of those practices, but or I don't know if you even call them practices. But I also noticed that a lot of things I could do more easily with FlowWise and Active Pieces and Superbase in the background and then have the UI talk to that back end. So I'm going to find that balance here where we're building the back end with these tools that just get the job done a little bit more consistently and easily, especially when you start seeing some of the things we're going to build. So I'll use those tools to build out the back end, maybe obviously manually, but then we get into MCPs. And the whole idea of an MCP is this crazy gray area between Lovable and AI and Cursor and other tools just building this stuff for you, Claude Code. So we're still in that area though where it can do it, but I'm not sure how much it can do just yet. And what I mean by that, and let me go over the whole project so we can see. So we're going to build your the app I keep trying to build, and I've built it a few times, and I like it, but I want to get it to where I'm using it in a friendly web interface every day, and it just has these little bells and whistles I want. So we'll start slow, and we'll eventually get to these bells and whistles. One of them is browser use doing the order for me, but one of them will be recipes as well that we can send to it. But I'll cover that in a moment. So what we have here is a system we're going to build that will let people log in, create a preferences, and then every week they get a weekly meal plan. Nothing special, just like these are the things you could cook this week that aren't crazy hard to do in a shopping list. It's not to make a health system. It's not to do anything. Just to quit making it so we're trying to figure out what we want to cook that day, that week, and what we want to buy. And we'll have a lot of features later on, like favorites and things that we don't want anymore and repeats and feedback, things like that. So we'll get there as well. But then the question becomes, how much do I build and how much do I let these other systems like FlowWise do for me? How much do I have the AI build for me using just Cursor or Claude? So could I really build out the whole system with just Cursor or Claude? Uh, I don't think so. Could I build out the whole system with Lovable? Maybe. <laughs> So I think, I think though right now, the safest bet is what I'm going to show. I think though in a few months, it will change. It's just that simple. And that's, we all know that it just keeps changing. So right now I'm going to go with this approach and try to mix things up. So let me go through the goal of the app and then the tools being used. So of course we have a front end and the user will have a homepage to see what this thing is for. They can authenticate for free for 30 days. We'll add Stripe later. But in the end, I want to scratch my own itch. So we're going to see where the balance is here with an app that is for me and an app that is for people to sign up for and use. They're going to have a preferences page. This is really key because this will drive the overall prompting of the system. But more importantly, it's what they want to eat, their likes, their dislikes. And if we do this page right, there'll be a chat widget with FlowWise. Yet FlowWise to say, hey, let's walk through this. Let me ask you any more questions. And that's what we'll be building. The preferences page is an interesting one. As I talk about these patterns, we're going to see that you can use these patterns on any application and quickly have a skeleton for any app. Preferences that lead to prompting so your app can have system level prompts built in so the user or the admin in the app can drive the prompt from there and not going back in the code. But okay, so once they have their preferences, the system will kick off their meal for the week, that week meals. And then again, the person can chat with that to update it and fix it as they see fit. And again, a lot of back and forth. They can edit it. We're not going to normalize everything in databases. We're going to have a more unstructured type of markdown interface. You'll see as we get there. And then I'm just not worried about structure right now. And you'll see later on why, but maybe we change that. Okay, so they get their weekly meal plans. They see them all. Then they see a weekly meal plan in their shopping list. And then they could chat with that to fix it and change it and give feedback. And lastly, they have a weekly schedule. There's a weekly schedule to generate the new meal plan in the shopping list for that week. They get the shopping list. And some of the ideals will be, hey, take that shopping list using browser use and go do the shopping for me in next thing, DoorDash or whatever is at your door. That's not impossible. So we might get there. I want to send recipes to the system, which is, again, not that hard. We'll have a way to send it to the system. 
And then favorites will be obviously that when they like a particular meal and they want to save it. But that's tricky because we're not going to separate the meals. So we'll come back to that after. That, that might be, I'm going to call that feedback because I think I had that working before as a feedback, just natural text. And again, that guy will be something we use FlowWise for. And you'll see why FlowWise is a big deal in this. It really can do this. Actually, it probably doesn't even need active pieces for this, so we'll just take it as it comes. Now I'm going to start with the back end first, and we're going to use Postman to build out the test the routes as we build them or the chat. FlowWise is a great way to test chat. We'll build the back end with Superbase, our self-hosted version, which Lovable does not like, but we'll figure that out. And active pieces will drive anything that's API related, so we don't worry about a license. It's just that simple. And Aiden is awesome. I would use it for everything, but I don't want to build something and then worry about a license. I just don't. And I don't want to, I don't just want the gray area. We'll definitely be hitting MCPs. I'm still learning, but I'm just, I know it's important, so I want to not leave that out. Now, as we build the back end, as we test it or hit it with Postman, we eventually will then build the front end. And it's a pattern I use where I tell Lovable or whatever I'm building in Cursor, because we might need Cursor, to use my APIs to talk to. And so therefore, it's not building the complexity. It's just talking to the API, getting a response. So on that note, we will use our database will be Superbase, and we're going to use Prisma to run the migrations. Superbase's command line tool is amazing, but it doesn't seem to work with a hosted database, self-hosted. So using Prisma, we can generate some migrations. I've had some issues there where it busted up the public permissions, but I was able to obviously have Cloud fix that. So we'll generate some database tables as we go. Again, you could probably just hit Lovable and just it would do all this for you and build the databases in the structure. It just depends on how you want to go at it. it, it there either way is amazing. I'm going to try this way, but as a developer and now what I call a builder, I easily can complicate things. So if we get too far into the weeds here and I'm like, yeah, I'm making this harder than it needs to be, then we'll back off and do it the more normal or the easier or the more modern way. And that's the tricky part as a developer is knowing when to let go and just let the systems do this stuff. And it's getting so good. It's not that far off. Okay, let's see. We'll build our tables. We'll go through that as we get closer. And then we'll use a mix of tools, cursor, cloud code. I might start with cloud code because I'm really impressed with that. But it definitely doesn't make for great video, so I'll be speeding through that. And with that, we'll use whatever we can for MCP stuff. I think that's it. By the time we're done, we should have a decent web application that we can speak to, text with, add files to, share links with, and eventually just get our meal plans out of it every day or every week, every day, whenever we want. And, and that's about it. So let's dig in. Let's see how this goes. It is going to be quite long, and I guess we'll just uh, might hit a dead end. I might do some of these live. If you want live, join the news list below, and then I'll start revving up the live stuff. But in the meantime, let's just start digging in and building.